At this point in the instructions, we'll continue with the windows. Please don't use windows off the internet. It's no one on a site plan. You're looking at a 100 acre site and you're looking at 50 homes. Nobody is gonna look at the detail of the windows. The easy way to do this with very little data is you'll choose a trim color. Let's just choose white. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to just close up the windows. You can use outside or inside. And we're doing this before we create uh, the, the roof line because we want to access the inside of these windows easily. And notice I'm not doing the patio door. And so anything that's a window, just close up. Now it looks white, it isn't white. It's, you've got to paint the outside. Make sure you paint the outside of these windows. And you'll see the inside, oops, edit, undo. The inside is not white, it's gray. So one side might not show gray, uh, white. So we've got the windows and then determine the width you want of the trim. So what I'm going to do is use the, this tool here, that offset tool, highlight the window, come in and then choose your window trim. So if I hit three and enter, that's three inch. So I could just come down and just use that one reference, the top. Remember we made all the tops the same distance. So I could just enter three once and use what's already there by tapping the point that's already there. And that's kind of cool in SketchUp how you can do that and how it, it does a really nice job of referencing. And then you'll open the windows and just use the select tool, select the middle and then delete it. Now we've got the openings and we want to do the push pull tool. Again, hit the plus mark to make it a solid and then pull those on to the inside. You can use a fancy window off the internet. There's more data in that window than there is in this entire building. And then you're putting all that data in and replicating it. And what happens is if you've used SketchUp long enough, you know it's like hitting the brakes. Land Mentor, you'll know the more data you got, the slower it's gonna move, just like SketchUp. And if you wanna create a fancy window, again, I would caution against too much data. And again, on a site plan, nobody's gonna know the detail. You could separation and just pull it through and then create your fancier window and then you can split that up how you want. Very, very little data. Very, very fast to move around. Nothing's gonna slow down. Our garage door is approximately six foot high. So I'm gonna move up, get six foot, enter. And then it sets a point where the six foot mark is pull that over, pull it through. Now I've got my garage doors. Now over here, we're gonna to choose to erase this because I'm just gonna use a door off the internet, a image that already has a side window instead of closing off the door. And just arbitrarily, and you'll see why later, I'm just going to close this off. And luckily that did match. You'll see a thick line if there's a problem like we showed before. And that matches there. And I can get rid of this line. So what you wanna do is clean edges here. So when we offset a roof, then it's a kind of a single command. Uh, the other thing we'll do here, and we didn't talk about the back porch much, we'll come back to that later is I do want to close this off because there's an overhang here. So now we've got that and I should be able to just go through one line and it creates a roof, a ceiling. And what you want to do is kind of a off color, the ceiling of the home colored in with the color. And then we're going to offset by hitting the select tool. I'm going to start here and be careful. You're right on the line. Hold the control button down because it's multiple selection. And you want to see this line go all the way over. We're going to select this and then this. And this is going to be a roof that's overhanging here. 
So I could close this down, but keep on holding the control button down. I'm going to do that later. And I'm going to hit my offset tool that we did with the window, stretch it out, and we're going to put 12 and enter for a one foot offset. So 12 and enter. And now I've got my one foot offset. Over here, I'm going to go over from this point, 12, and I'll set a point there, come up to this edge, blue line, connect that, so I'm right here, move that over, you're on the red axis, but I want to intersect this line. So I end up with that point, it'll say from point, and then connect your line, and you've got your roof overhang. And again, on the colors, what you want to do, it looks white, it's not white, you want to color the overhang and I'm going to erase this line here, that point, and color that. And we've got our overhang in white on the top and the bottom. I'm going to use my push-pull tool and then pull that up, six, enter, six inches. Then I'm going to just take one line, and now we've got a nice clean roof, and I can erase these other lines. But before I do that, there's one important thing, and you might want to do this as you work, because if we look at, you can see these are not lines, these are not intersections. What you want to do, and, and occasionally as you work, is hit Select All, right click, intersect faces with selection and then it creates individual faces everywhere. So you want to do that on occasion. Very important. So let's talk about trim and such. So what I'm going to do is go to stone, choose the stone color, and what I'm going to do again plus bring the uh, columns down just so they don't float and then bring them up. Again I'm using the, can always use the plus I'm going to say file and then and I'm going to import a image. So you have different things you can import. If you have uh, Pro, you could do AutoCAD. I've already imported some garage doors off the internet and I'm going to use uh, these doors here, these kind of fancy doors. And what happens is you'll move your cursor and then you'll move the door to where it will take and fit off the model. Now you can see my door openings are rather large. It might be that it's out of scale. And so you'll do a combination of a few things. One is maybe the door is taller. And again, nobody's going to measure this. So a lot of the stuff I'm doing visually and not going crazy with. So I'm going to go tools, scale tool not rotate, scale, get my door, scale it up to a scale I want, and then you could fit the opening to the, the door itself. The other thing you could do is once the door is created, snap to it, hit control C, that will copy it, control V will duplicate it. So end point, now I've got one here, and again, in this case, I'm going to move the, up, get the right thing, move the ceiling up to the image itself, and then control, select tool, control C, control V, and then bring the next door in. And then use the select tool again to take and correct the door opening. I'm going inside the garage. And then I'm going to move this wall over to match the door. So that's how I use images off the internet. Same thing here. I'm going to say File, Import, and then a, a fancier door with the openings, the window openings, and do the exact same thing here I did before. This one's a little sensitive. Move it here. You could actually then move the move tool and then move it again later. 
and we've got the fancy dancy door. Same thing in the patio door. File, import, my patio door. So I'll use this door here and scale that. If, if it's hard to move, just take and use the scale and then you have more control. And again, uh, this is something I probably should have done before the roof, but it's still easy to scale it. Now I'm going to go into wood and I'm going to use a wood pattern, make a wood deck, bring that down and now I've got my wood deck. The rest of it, as far as trim, is going, uh, and again, if, if the cladding and everything that you're using is a little bit different, it's pretty easy to use a third party a SketchUp tool. And I usually go underneath and match the underneath with a, um, a trim that is going to be um, not shown and be obvious when the ground changes. And then I'm going to go into a nice stone and choose a, a contrasting stone color for the rest of this. That's more. So you're going to look at to make sure there's no lines showing up on the side. And the reason for that is you want to get right in the middle of this for the hip roof. And if that line wasn't erased, you wouldn't hit the middle. So I'm just going to go up and I look at the architectural plan and I can see the hip is 12 foot tall. And all I have to do is go up a little bit on the blue axis, type in 12 and the foot mark, and then come through, erase this. Again, it looks white. It's not go into colors. White's right here. And then the easiest way to create these roof lines is just the plus mark, the control mark over here. What I want to do is I have intersect the surfaces. I'm just going to erase these lines here and then come to the edge. My blue line up here, from there I look at the architectural plans. It's eight foot and I went up eight, the foot mark, color this color this. Again, pull tool, pull it to the one mark, and then pull it through the roof. A straight line, I want to go right to the middle of this, go blue line straight up, straight down, create that, and then pull that. Again, you'll see there's no line here, so select tool, Control A, select all, intersect faces with selection. And now we've got the individual faces. From that, you've learned in SketchUp how to take and edit your roofs. So we're just going to real quickly create something a little bit fancier using SketchUp's roof edge tool and the instructions you've already learned and going through I'm just eyeballing this because, to be honest with you, nobody's going to measure this when it's on a site plan. So it's a little bit different standard than what you've learned. Maybe if you're an architect, uh, you do not want to create all that extra data. I'm just erasing these little lines here. Push-pull tool, push it to the edge, and then as I erase this, we've got that roof line. So this is how you create the model for your SketchUp. Just finish it up with your roofing and your whatever trim you want. And basically, it's done. Remember, the last step, control A, right click, intersect faces with selection. Very important is the last step, control A, make a group. It has to be a group before it goes into Land Mentor. And now you have the basis of the model. So I'm going to save it as, I'll say it's a SketchUp Garage Left 
patio home. And then what you want to do is flip it along the red axis. So now it's flipped. Explode it. Intersect faces with selection. Control A and make that a group. And then file, say that as the same thing with garage right patio home. Now, Land Mentor is not going to be able to read a SketchUp file, so you would export it as a 3D model. Make sure it's a collada. Do the same thing, export. Now it's the garage right, read in the garage left, export, garage left. Now it's ready to import using the virtual reality 3D as a 3D model for use in Land Mentor.